Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Debbie and I'm on the creative design team at Sizzix and I'm here today to share with you all the different techniques that you can use on your Big Shot machine, whether you're going to be doing embossing with a die, which you probably never knew you could do, or an embossing folder. I'm going to walk you through all the different techniques, show you some samples, so as soon as I'm done, you're going to get excited to get started. So I'm kind of like a live brochure. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera overhead so you can watch me hands-on. So first I'm going to share with you the different levels of embossing. I'm going to start off with our traditional one. This was our textured impression. All of them have what some people call mountains and valleys, some people call them innies and outies, some say male and female. There's a part that's the mountain, so obviously that's the part that's arched up, and then there's the valleys. So what happens is the pressure from the machine when you roll it through the roller, the positive part presses through your material, whether you're cutting, I read, sorry, whether you're embossing with foil or any kind of cardstock or any materials, the positive pushes through your material into the negative to create the image. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it with a traditional textured impression embossing folder on my Big Shot machine. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that the wrong side of the paper is against the mountain, and that's the part that's protruding. So this is the part that's raised. And I'm going to go ahead and close this down. So what happens is the pressure from the machine will push the mountain up into the paper, into this negative space, and then it'll create the embossed image. So with the Big Shot machine, you have the platform and the cutting, the thin die adapter pad. So since I'm not doing any die cutting, I'm going to go ahead and take this piece off, this adapter off. And on here, it'll show you exactly what you need to do. So since I'm doing a textured impression, and it'll show you what it looks like too, so there's no question, I'm going to go ahead and build it on this level. So since this is a textured impression, I'm going to put this down. I have my material inside of my folder. Make sure it's even. I'm going to go ahead and close it up. And so it'll show you. You're going to have a cutting pad on the bottom, your textured impression folder with the material inside, and then another cutting pad on top. Now, no matter whether you're cutting or not, you do need two cutting pads. That's just what we call them um, because it balances out the pressure as it goes to the machine. So I'm going to go ahead, run it through. You'll feel a little bit of pressure. And look at that amazing design. So it looks good either way. Both sides look perfectly fine. It depends on the style that you want. But this is ready to add to the front of a card. You could do it on the pieces of a box. And I'll show you some different samples that we've created, just showing you the different techniques that you can go ahead and add this to to make your projects beautiful. So that's using our textured impressions. This was our original uh, embossing folder back in the day. Okay, so now I'm going to use that same folder, but I'm going to use a diffuser. Now a diffuser is a kind of like a cutting pad. The plastic is a little softer and the set includes different shapes. There's circles, there's ovals, there's squares. This one has the heart cut out obviously. So you're going to get the positive and the negative. This is the negative. So if you think about it, when you're running through um, an embossing folder through the machine, the embossed image is only going to be where there's pressure. So since I used a full cutting pad, there was pressure throughout the entire embossing folder. So the paper was inside. I used a cutting pad that was all the way a, a full cutting pad. So the pressure was even throughout. So you can imagine what would happen if I use this as a cutting pad. So this acts as a cutting pad on top. So I'm going to have one on the bottom. I'm going to put a piece of cardstock inside, just like this. Close it up. So I have a cutting pad on the bottom. My material and my um, embossing folder. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this one on top. So since I'm going to have this on top, there's only going to be pressure here. So I'm assuming you guys can imagine the beauty that's going to come from this. So an easy way to do it on these types of things is you want to make sure the roller hits it at a point just so it doesn't jump and it'll grip it quickly and evenly. So I'm going to go ahead and hold it down just by my thumb and I'm going to run it through. So since the pressure was only here, there's no pressure here because it's all cut out. This is the design that comes out. So since there was no pressure here, 
the only image that's embossed is this piece here. Okay? And let me show you to you. So I didn't miss the paper. I want to show you the difference of what happens if you miss the paper and if you don't. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, but I'm going to miss the paper a little bit. Trim down my paper. So when you miss your paper, whether you're doing embossing with the traditional textured impressions like I have here, or if you are using the 3D, missing the paper softens your fibers. Let me just do a little, so it's not fully saturated. You can see, but a little dry quickly from the pressure and as the time goes by. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put this in there like that. And I'll do the same thing. I'm going to run it through. So there's your cutting pad on the bottom and the cutting pad the diffuser here acts as a cutting pad, and I'm going to go ahead and run it through. So I'm going to do it a couple times just to get it even. I mean, it'll be even no matter what, but just with the um, softened fibers, it softens it up, and it won't do that buckle look. How beautiful is that? So see the difference? The paper was dry on this one, and it buckled a little bit. So if you soften your fibers, it goes through beautifully, no problem at all. That is so pretty, ready to add on to a card, put a little sentiment in there, and you're good to go. So with any of the embossing, I'm going to go ahead and do it on this one just because it's already a dry one, it's not damp. You could do, just kind of um, add a little ink from your blending tool, and it'll make the embossed image a lot more vibrant. It'll bring it out really strongly, and it'll be a lot more detailed. I mean, it's beautiful as is, but look at the difference. So that's just showing you how you can do it with a regular textured impression cutting pad and using the diffuser. So that's that technique. Love that, love that, love that. And now I'm going to go ahead with our 3D embossing. Now our 3D embossing is, the, you can tell that the plastic from the folder is a lot stronger and it gives you so much more detail. So. This one, you definitely, you do not need two cutting pads, and I'll walk you through that one and show you why. This is so thick, both sides, the uh, positive and the negative, are such a heavy plastic that this acts as your bottom cutting pad, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and show you. So I'm going to take this one out, but I will need one on top. Now, normally, you would coat both sides. I'm using our texture roll. This is our silver texture roll. I cut it a tag. So what you would want to do is, Instead of running a full piece of paper through your um, embossing folder and then cutting it out the shape, you're going to lose a lot of the detailed impression if you go do it that way. So what you want to do is you want to have your shape first already, ready to go, because that way you ha I have the tag here, I'll run it through the machine, and the design will stay as is because I don't need to run it through to cut the tag. Unless you want it to be a little more faint, but the point of having such a detailed embossing folder is you want it to be as strong as an image as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to miss just the back of this because the water will just kind of roll off the front. So I'm just going to miss the back side because the back is kind of like a, um, is a craft type um, softened paper. So here it just would stay damp. It's okay if it gets wet because it will obviously dry or you can um, wipe it off. So I'm going to go ahead. I want the positive to put, push through this back side into the negative of the um, top of the folder. So they all match up and the two pieces, the two levels meet up with each other. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. And like I said, you just want to make sure that it kind of hits it at an angle. Only one cutting pad because you would see if I tried to have one on top and one on the bottom, it's not going to go. It won't go anywhere. So you only want to have one on the top. So your, and it'll show you right there, 3D texture impression material inside of the folder and build it right on there, one cutting pad. Single sheet of paper and one cutting pad. So it's still damp and then just like I said earlier, it softens the fibers of the paper. And since it's a 3D folder, you want to run it three times. Maybe more, depends on if you like odd numbers or even numbers. But definitely three times. And using a metallic, I mean, how beautiful is that? I love that. The tag is ready to go. Embellish it with something else. It's such a beautiful image. So that's the Shells 3D embossing folder. Now something that I've always liked to do is I like saving my material from our packaging. So believe it or not, look how beautiful this turns out. This is just 
cut this one. I don't know if you can see it. Let's find something that I can put it up against so you can see that it's a plastic swan. It's using our plastic from our packaging of getting a, any of our uh, dyes. So close that up in there. Even though it's a thin, not a thick piece of paper, but because I'm using the 3D, you want to make sure that you are um, only using one cutting pad. I'm going to go ahead, run it through. And look at that. No matter what you use, the embossing is just absolutely beautiful. So don't throw out your trash, my friends. <laughs> so that's using the 3D embossing folder. Now another 3D embossing folder that we have, this is our multi-level. Now the 3D embossing folder, there's um, three dimensionals, so three dimensions. So it's kind of rounded and swoopy, and but this one has levels. And this one, uh, mountains and valleys are kind of what we call on our embossing folders. But the multi-level, this is the Floral Flourish, I believe it's called. Yes, Floral Flourishes. This one is multi-level, so it's kind of a kind of hard to see uh, with the naked eye, but the way they create it, it's multi-level. So it's multiple levels, just not a few. It's multiple levels that build all different heights of the finished image, and it's absolutely beautiful. So this one, same idea. I'm just going to go ahead and list up. I have my heart shape all ready to go. Go ahead and run it through. Three times. How beautiful is that? That's using our also our same silver texture roll. I'll do it on our festive cardstock just so you could see how it would work with um, paper. Obviously beautiful. But let me just prove it. Oops. I want to slide around in there. I mean, how beautiful are these different folders and the techniques? I mean, gone are the days of light boxes and your stylus with a brass stencil. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I mean, this is the detail that you can get in these. It's absolutely stunning. How about that? Isn't that gorgeous? So the same one, just using two different materials. And this is the multi-level embossing folder. Okay, next I'm going to do the Impresslet. So the Impresslet is our traditional, um, back in the day, using the textured impression embossing folder that we started with. This one has a blade in it. So not only is it going to um, emboss, it will also cut it for you. So that's a great, um, you get it all in one swoop. You don't have to emboss it and then get another die to cut it, which is also fun. But this one makes it easy. So I'm going to miss just the back side. And this one, since there's a blade in it, it doesn't matter. You're still going to want to have the cutting pad on the bottom and one on the top. Got this piece to use for another date Let's, or the and this one to add to a card so you could print out something you could put another image in there but look how beautiful that is add it to the front of a card and absolutely gorgeous you cut it and you emboss it all at one time beautiful image ink it up distress it a little bit it's ready to go on the front of a card on the front of a gift bag absolutely beautiful so that is using the impresslet you're impressing it and you're also cutting it. Okay, so next I'm going to show you the 3D Impresslets. Now that's the same technique, but since I'm using the 3D embossing folder and the blade, remember since this plastic is heavier, I'm not going to have another cutting pad on the bottom. So this is the same exact technique, and I'm going to go ahead and miss my paper just a little bit. And this one's beautiful. This one has the blade and the detailed butterfly. So you're going to cut out the butterfly, and at the same time, you're going to emboss the beautiful image of his detailed wings inside. So make sure the paper is completely covered. The blade. And remember, one cutting pad on the bottom only. 
I just have it in an angle so the roller will hit the point first and that means and that makes it easier um, so your machine doesn't jump and also it uh, just makes it go through a lot smoother. Three times since it's 3D or more. Oops, I lost my water. And the detail. How about that? I mean, can you imagine how beautiful that would be on some type of a metal? Love that. That is gorgeous. The detail is beautiful. So this is using our opulent gold cardstock. So that is that. Um, next I'm going to show you the switchlet. So if you're not familiar with the switchlet, it's also, it's similar to this. However, you get to switch out the different dies that are included in the die set. So this is the leaf. This one is called, sorry, spring leaves. So you're going to get three different leaves to switch out. Get it? Switch leaves. <laughs> But the part that's going to be embossed are the veins of the leaf. But you see these little magnets? There's four little magnets. Those are just going to lock right onto your actual leaf shape. And you can kind of hear them go. And you know they're good to go. So that one's there. I'm going to go ahead, put the paper in, close it up, and the vein will push into the negative part of the vein. And, into, and then the blade will also cut around the leaf. So let me miss this a little bit. Don't want to miss it on camera. That's why I keep turning. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and lay that in there like that. I mean, if you did different variety of green cardstock, absolutely beautiful. So like I said, one um, cutting pad on top just because it's three-dimensional and it's the heavier plastic. beautiful is that? And let me show it to you um, using all three. So this is the one that I just did and this is the larger fatter one and this is the largest one. So you just switch them out. I mean it's such a great technique and you get so much at the same time. I mean the assortment that you could do using a foliage or adding some flowers, absolutely beautiful. So that is the spring leaves and that is a switchlet. So you're cutting and embossing at the same time, three dimensional, but you're able to switch it out. Okay, so that's that technique. And then the last one that I'm going to show you is the emboss and transfer. So remember in the beginning when I said, did you ever think that you could do something with a die to make it an embossing folder. So I'm going to show you our emboss and transfer set. Emboss and transfer set comes with an impressions pad and a silicone rubber. So the impressions pad is a lot softer than a regular cutting pad, but it allows you to press your die into your material because it's not as heavy as the card as the regular cutting pad. And the silicone rubber that's included in the set, that softens the uh, pressure as it goes through. So let me go ahead and show you how that works. So I've used this die here. This is the botanical die. But my friend Alexis used it with um, the embossed and transfer set. And then also did it here to ink it up. So how beautiful is that? So not only would this cut a beautifully detailed um, die, uh, you cut your cardstock, but using it as an embossing folder, sorry, not embossing, but using the die as an embossed design, you not only have to cut it, but you can also use it to emboss. So let me show you how that works. So it'll show you on your um, platform here exactly what you would need to do. Clean up my mess. So as you can see, it'll show you for the emboss and transfer, it'll tell you exactly what you need to use. So you're going to use the um, platform, which is this, the cutting pad. On top of the cutting pad with the blade up, you're going to use your die. So that's the thinlet. On top of the thinlet, you're going to have your cardstock. And then on top of that, the silicone rubber. And then the 
actual cutting, or sorry, an impressions pad. So you only have one cutting pad and that's the one on the bottom. Your blade is up with the material on top of that, but it's not gonna cut it because the silicone rubber, like I said, kind of softens it. And the impressions pad makes sure it doesn't cut through because otherwise if you use a cutting pad, it will cut through your silicone rubber. You don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna have the cutting pad on the bottom, the blade up, okay? I'm gonna have my cardstock on top of that. Actually, let me miss this a little bit. And I'm gonna put that on there. And then I'm going to use the silicone rubber. So what I like to do is I like to hold it down and just kind of lay, since it's flimsy, lay the silicone rubber on top so I make sure it doesn't shift because I won't be able to see it because the rubber is a solid color and it, I won't be able to see if it shifted So before I put the cutting pad on. I'm sorry, the impressions pad. So you want to make sure that the impressions pad is on there covering completely this whole image as well. So I'm going to go ahead. Sounds like it's cutting it, but it's not. Just a lot of blade on that one because it has so much in those details of the um, thinlet. Look how beautiful that is. My paper was a little bit larger, but isn't that absolutely gorgeous? So the same idea, inked up or using a pen or using our ink sheets, however you want to do it. I mean, the detail is beautiful. So not only can you use this as a card front if you're cutting it out as a detailed die, but using the, impression, the uh, emboss and transfer set, it'll show you all the different things that you can do using that and then inking it afterwards. So it would be a beautiful card front for a die and also a beautiful card front if you're using it as an embossed image. So that's all the different techniques. I want to show you too. This is I don't have a, a piece to, to do the technique with you, but how beautiful is this? This is actual rawhide leather, misted, like completely soaked misted and run through on one of our embossing folders, the, um, the traditional uh, texture impression one. Um, run it through that with a mist of just run through and the water just kind of soaks in and stays in. But the fact that it can emboss something this heavy, this sturdy, how amazing is that? Absolutely beautiful. So let me move some of these off to the side and then I'm going to show you some fun um, projects that we've done. So using the embossing folder, I mean, it could also uh, emboss heavy media um, cardstock. So something like this, I've just added a piece of cardstock onto our media board with our, with our adhesive sheets. But before I did that, I would run the cardstock through an embossing folder and then lay it on top of that. But if I'm using an actual, um, the textured impression, this would definitely emboss this heavy cardstock, just like I said with the leather. I mean, this is as thick as the leather. so. This was beautiful. So this is what was done here on this one to create this cute little book. Love that. This is another embossing, um, 3D embossing folder with the glaze. Hopefully you can see the shimmer shimmer. Just another simple piece inked up with a blending tool. Using it as a frame for one of our Father's Day cards or Dad's birthday. Love that. And then just cutting different pieces, same die, cutting it in different colors and look at that cute little cake she created and this is one of our um, our deco uh, 3d embossing folders kind of hidden inside of this die cut um, I don't know if you can see but it's kind of a thicker cardstock mounted up and then um, peeking through is the embossed image I love that that's beautiful too and the color is so nice and bright and ready for spring this one using just the ink a lot of misted water gives it a really good dimensional depth using the embossing folder there. And I also wanted to see, show you how it works on our, um, our foam. So this is our foam. It's from our, I believe this is the hibiscus color. I mean, this is sculpting foam and it die cut the tag and embossed beautifully. So that shows you how well that comes through. And just here's a couple other techniques using either the luster wax or um, some of our paints, once you go ahead and emboss it, we can just add the little dimension and add a little embellishing to it to create uh, just more of a formal type card. And the gold is absolutely beautiful. Same idea. 
with some of the glaze and some once it's glazed it's inked and here's another card using the same technique as the background so this was a die run it through instead of um, cutting it actually this is embossing folder sorry but do the embossing ink it up and it just creates a beautiful card I love that so let me show you a few of the other images I showed you the leaves and just using some of the metallics this is our charcoal metallic this apps turned out absolutely beautiful this is the flourish this is on our um, opulent rose gold and this is the rose gold um, mirror I believe from our opulent um, collection so that is that I hope you guys have enjoyed all of the little tips and tricks and I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera back to the other straight on so I hope you've been inspired by what I've shared with you today in my guide to embossing whether you're using the impress lids, the switch lids, the embossing folder, the 3D embossing folder, the multi-level embossing folder, the diffusers, or any of your thin lids as an embossing technique with your emboss and transfer set, we look forward to seeing what you create. Please, if you have any questions, drop them or any comments in the comment section below, and we'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again next time.